It's all or nothing. And Brendan had four good years with the New Jersey Devils and was signed last year by St. Louis as a free agent. St. Louis expected Brendan to be tough, make plays, and score, and Brendan did not disappoint. 171 minutes in penalties, 33 goals, and 33 assists. What a year! When GMs and coaches get together, they always say, we need a big, tough winger who can score, and Brendan fits that description to a T. Brendan Shanahan of the St. Louis Blues. people here tonight. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyhow, right off the bat and get harder later on, where were you born and raised? Well, uh, the last time uh, we did the show, I was uh, <clears throat> talking about where I was born and raised, and uh, I mentioned Mimico, and Mimico is known as a place that uh, they have a go a go stop, and they have the Blue Goose Tavern. Oh, yeah, it's, 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 that's it? And I guess there was a few guys in the Blue Goose when they had the show on, and uh, Peter bought around for them, so uh, I'm going to mention it again, yeah. and that way we'll have the, the Goose will be back. We won the Blue Goose, we won four rounds for mentioning it again, right? You know, a lot, a lot of kids, uh, a lot of kids, you know, they're home and that, and they wonder how everybody gets to the National Hockey League. Somehow they think you're just born in the National Hockey League. How you get to the National Hockey League? Well, I mean, growing up, I really was never the big star in, in any hockey league uh, that I played, and I, I enjoyed more success playing lacrosse. I probably look forward more to that season. Um, but when hockey would start, I mean, there was other guys on the team that were stars, and I just kept plugging along, I think, my whole, uh, my whole minor career, I guess you'd call it. And um, I would try to work on every uh, part of my game. Uh, I think uh, I have to, I owe a lot to my parents. They. Not necessarily, they uh, both a uh, couple of uh, potatoes from Ireland and <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know too much about the game, but what they did teach me was is about being a, a good sport and things like that. So, I mean, uh, you know, I all of a sudden got drafted in the first round, which was a big shock to London Knights. Uh, I was 16 years old. I had good size and I thought that there's an opportunity being a first rounder to get a bit of exposure going to junior. So I decided I'd, uh, I mean, I, I went to Michael Power High School, which is a big school in yeah. uh, Toronto. So opportunity to go to college, but I thought uh, I've got a chance to make it to the NHL at a young age, so I'm going to go for it. Dave, you know, a lot of people in the old days, do, and it's true in the old days back in the 50s and maybe the 60s, that uh, you, you, junior hockey, they never thought about education, just play hockey, but that's all changed now. Well, it has. I mean, I remember the night before uh, I went to London, I went to a Bruce Springsteen concert at the X, and I came home and uh, I had all my bags packed, and my mother says, you're not going. And I said, I am going. And she says, you're not going. They called and said that they're not going to pay for your university. We had a deal that uh, had I not signed a pro contract that they were going to pay for my university. Uh, they said that they weren't all of a sudden. And my mother uh, performed a little holdout of her own in our little street on Willowbrook. And uh, <laughs> eventually they called back and, and uh, gave it to us. And I mean, that was our concern going into the yeah. OHL. And that was their concern as well. They wanted to make sure I got a and they thought it over and uh, really they were the ones that were calling me in the morning sometimes after a long road trip getting me out of bed out to school that was a big priority uh, there's a lot of time if, if a kid tells you he doesn't have time to do his homework playing the OHL then he's uh, he's crazy all the time on the bus and things like that you uh, you do have a lot of time to do extra work and in fact uh, it's um, it's an in fact the kids that play hockey have a higher average than the ordinary students didn't know that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got uh, when I was junior. I brought it down an awful lot. But anyhow, we'll get to junior in that. And the one we have to talk about that I think uh, was one of the 
tough, I've, I've been in hockey a long time. I've been in the toughest leagues in the world. I was in every uh, pro league there was, but I've seen a lot, and I've seen a lot of brawls. But I have never seen anything compare with that junior brawl. Now, you two, we're gonna, that, and everybody knows what I'm talking about. We'll start, and you pick it up. Okay, you ready up there, Dave? Roll that junior brawl, you wouldn't believe this. All right, let's see, here it starts right now. Here it is. Well, that's Everett Santa Pass uh, pounding a guy. Um, that's when the bench is cleared. Really, at this point, uh, there's not too many guys standing around. Yeah. Uh, that was unbelievable. My, my brothers were mad at me that I wasn't in the middle of the ice fighting. I'm up against a glass, and that's their only concern was they couldn't show off to their friends. Oh. <laughs> it was a pretty wild. Well, battle. that really, uh, that was really something, you know. And you know, a lot of people see that and maybe forget what happened. But explain what ha what what. You know, made it happen. Well, uh, Theron Fleury uh, started a little bit of a, I guess he was jostling with one of the Russians, and it just seemed to be a domino effect. Uh, Theron got knocked over, Mike Keane came and knocked that guy over. Some guy came and knocked him down from behind, and it just went like that. Eventually, that fight started five on five, and I mean, had a guy twice his size, and Mike Keane was really doing a number on one of the Russians, and I think that they were concerned that they were going to get hurt and they opened the door, uh, their bench was kind of uh, beside ours, they opened the door and sent two guys out. So, I mean, uh, at that point, we had a lot of guys, it just seemed on that team, we had a lot of guys that weren't only good players, but were known as tough guys yeah. in the OHL or WHL or, as fighters. And, I mean, it's instinctive uh, when you know that someone on the ice is going to be out, outmanned or outnumbered, especially against these Russians, because they were twice the size of yeah. us, that you just go. They and, I mean, control we did. pretty good, couldn't they? Well, they're strong guys. I've been bragging for years that I that I kicked the uh, the uh, well. I beat Careful. this I beat this guy up, <laughs> and uh, now they're all coming over the NHL. So I'm gonna kind of calm it yeah. down. Maybe he, he might he might string me out at center ice or something. It cost you a gold medal though, didn't it? Eh? It cost us the real gold medal, but I mean um, that comes up now and again. And really, uh, you know, you you've got proud sport for Canada and things like that. And really. I don't think anybody went home sad. No. We didn't. We didn't go home sad. We, we basically were escorted to the border by the army. We weren't allowed to go to the party afterwards, and uh, we weren't allowed to talk to anybody. And we were just escorted right out of the border, right to uh, Austria. And we were all in the airport. And our biggest concern at the time was that we heard that uh, yourself and Brian Williams nearly got in a fist fight. Yeah, that's right. I'm right. And we were hoping that you'd string him out because we heard that uh, we heard that there was a. You know, he was maybe saying that it was our fault. Yeah, and what happened was a lot of, and I was really disappointed what I was. I was really disappointed in the, the, the support. You got no support at all over there. But old Harold, Harold Ballard <laughs> comes through for you. Tell yeah. us what happened there. Well, I got a call about a month later, and uh, they said, uh, come down to the gardens, and Harold Ballard has made up gold medals for the entire team, and we want you to accept them on behalf of the team. And uh, I think Harold was known uh, as a guy and better believe it uh, the guys really appreciated the gesture like, like I said we flew home on a lo very long flight wondering whether we were going to be uh, jeered and booed and things like that I straightened that out Brenda don't worry <laughs> it turned to be like a hero's welcome better and... believe it <laughs> and, and, and when guys stick up for themselves then but now you're a number one pick and you get on uh, Hockey Night in Canada, and you got, I got in trouble over the whole thing. You don't know. It was, it was the funniest thing. I, all I said was, now, you're the number one pick. You know what that means when you go to the training camp. You remember what? Yeah. He said, uh, you got to buy the first round. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyhow, well, you did, didn't you? That's what I mean. Yeah, but they were mad because I was only 17 or 18 when you said it. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> Anyhow, you still did buy the round, anyhow. But, you know, you went to New Jersey. You had some great years in New Jersey. And uh, we've got, I'll tell you one thing. I've seen guys get their first goal to be happy. But don't say that anymore. We're just going to show you a little clip. Brendan likes it when he loves to score that first goal. Now, Mom, watch this. All right, okay, here he goes. It's a great goal. Snaps her in, just like he... Now, watch, he comes over. Tell us what you did here. I was so excited. I was thanking God there. And then I looked for the guy who passed me the puck in. <laughs> you guys in New Jersey, you had a, a bunch of scrappers there, I'll tell you. We had a we had a great group and now it seems that we've all we've all moved around. 
kind of what we considered the nucleus at the time. There's a few guys still there, but uh, we look back and we think we really had something there. Yeah, you did. And uh, I mean, I've got no regrets about going to New Jersey. Uh, the Devils, uh, they, they, they placed a lot of care and stock into the type of uh, player I was. And uh, I was happy with my team. I mean, they, uh, things got a little sour towards the end with all yeah. that uh, free agency stuff. But, I mean, we could have had a great team. And yeah, be, there are a lot of teams like that. You look at Edmonton. Yeah, you know. Same thing. Um, we're going to show, I'll tell you how scrappy are. We're, we were always watching at one time. Watch this. We got another little clip here. You think these guys, they could take on the world. Now, go ahead. Let's see it again. Now, watch this. It's in the bench here. I'm sure it's a pretty. Now, look at John McClain. God love him. I hope he comes back next year, eh? Yeah, he'll be ready. He'd be ready. He's got a bad name. And Shanahan in the corner. I was really worried about your your hand there, eh? Like the rest of the guys. Look at your hand. What the well, hell? We're getting so much beer thrown on us there. I was feeling a little drunk on the way off. The <laughs> <laughs> Woo! And it was breaking glass and uh, the the whole thing. It's kind of frustrating to see a guy three feet away from you, uh, about half your size, with a beer in his hand, yeah. taunting you. So yeah, so you can't have that stuff. I no, guess. I know. We don't do that anymore, folks. <laughs> 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 now, you made the playoffs. That, what a game. Tell us about game in Chicago. I remember it sitting and watching it. Unbelievable. Well, I mean, I wasn't even playing. And that was, uh, in a way, it was like my, my biggest thrill and at the same time my biggest disappointment that I wasn't in that game. But we, uh, we had to win the game. The New York Rangers are sitting in their dressing room yep. watching, and we had to win. We couldn't tie to make the playoffs for the first time in uh, franchise history or Devils history. And uh, as it turned out, it was 3-3. We tied it up. John McClain tied it up late in the game. Yeah. And with about a minute left in overtime, John McClain scored in the rebound. And I mean, it was like we won the Stanley Cup. Oh, boy. I know, I've seen guys excited, but I've never... I, the, the, well, that was the first time you made the playoffs, like you said. Now you go in and you're, you, you do pretty good. Now you're against the Boston Bruins. What a vicious... Well, not vicious. What a tough series that was. Remember the benches? Uh, remember the, the, the big thing going on on the benches? Yeah, they... Uh, I mean, every game, it seemed, was a war for us. Uh, teams were, I think we really frustrated teams, or I think they just looked at us and said, look at these kids, how much fun they're having. Because yeah. uh, not, not, even, not even counting myself, I mean, like our leaders, Kirk Muller, uh, yeah, Joe yeah. Sorrello, John yeah. McClain, they're all, they're all young guys. And we were just so fired up. And if anybody stood in our way, we'd just run them over. Yeah, I mean, did. the Islanders were, were in first place uh, that season. I mean, we, were just, we just ran the guys over. Sean Burke played great, too, for you. Sean Burke came in as a 19-year-old and stood on his head. Yeah. And I mean, every game, it seemed, if anybody wanted to fight, we were willing to fight. I mean, even if it went into the into the hallway, our coaches were getting involved with well, things like that. Well, yeah. <laughs> O'Reilly was uh, with Schoenfeld, and then Schoenfeld got with uh, Koharski. We won't say anything. He, we won't say that he called him a big, fat pig. <laughs> I, mean, I, won't I won't. No. But Koharski's thin now. Doesn't eat donuts. <laughs> now, nah, let's get the whole deal. Then you come along and you hit the jackpot. I mean, Mom, that's pretty good. Did you ever think he'd be making this though? That is that's pretty <laughs> unbelievable. But that is really great, eh? What like it? I mean, think they. Uh... I guess you know uh, the one thing that feels good is I, I realize the type of player I am, and I'm never really going to change. And I think I felt good that a lot of players in the NHL were happy for me and excited for me. They felt that I earned it. A lot of it had to do with being at the right place at yeah. the right time. There are players uh, with, with better stats than me that maybe didn't look for that avenue. And I looked for an avenue to, to, uh, to be a free agent and to get picked up, and I found one. And I mean, it, it has a lot to do with being yeah. at the right place at the right time. You had a lot of pressure on you, especially when Scott, did you, what do you think when you read the award of oh. Scott Stevens? Whoa. Well, I mean, we, we heard during the Canada Cup that they asked for Scott. And, at the time, Scott wasn't too happy. He just settled down. And I was saying to my agent, I was going, oh, don't Please. tell me that they're not going to lose Scott. He's, he was the only guy in St. Louis that was on the Canada Cup team. I'm figuring, I, I'm sitting with him. Uh, I'm having lunch with him. I'm getting to know him. Met his wife. I mean, I'm thinking, OK, now I'm starting to get to know people. And then all of a sudden, these nice people are going to be uprooted. Yeah. And I got the phone call in my hotel. And I could tell by the tone of uh, my agent's voice that uh, they, they had lost Scott, and I just thought, oh boy. I thought the fans are going to hate me. Yeah. You started out kind of, you didn't really set the world the couple, first couple of weeks, right? I mean, uh, oh, but no. they were pretty good fans. They never got on you. Right from the start, I mean, we went into uh, New Jersey, home opener, and we got smoked. We played horrible. And then we went into Toronto and got shut out 3 nothing. And I'm just shaking my head going, oh, this is going to be a nice, yeah. a nice ovation when I get introduced for a home opener. Yeah. And right off the bat, ever since I got there, they, 
Right away, they said they didn't blame me. They were upset that that this had to happen yeah. to their captain. But I mean, all throughout the year, they always kind of went out of their way to make it seem to me that that they were happy that I was there to like cheer a little louder. It really seemed like they were. And me. you had your best year. You came through like a champ with your best year with a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure, but uh, things were. And Brian Sutter, now you got he he's your type of coach. I'll tell you. I know he's gone now, but he he must have helped you. Yeah, Brian. I mean. That's a big reason why I went to St. Louis. Yeah. Uh, having been coached by Brian Sutter is a guy that I respected, and it was uh, it was sad when he when he left. I mean, I saw him right after he was fired, and you could just see the pain in his oh. in his face. He had been there for 16 years yeah. as a player and coach, and I mean, I just I didn't know what to say to people. I hadn't been in the organization long enough to really know why. Of course, he went to a better spot anyhow. He went to the Bruins, so that should have made you feel. <laughs> You does, that, does that mean he's going to be the second best coach in Bruins history? Second best ever. <laughs> Guy knows. What do you think I got him on the show for? <laughs> but you got a good coach coming up uh, uh, down in Peoria. He was coach of the year, uh, Bobby Plager. Uh, he, he knows the game. He's played the game forever. And uh, he's got a sense of humor. I'll tell you the story before we go over to the bar. He's Cavallini got his finger cut off, right? And, they, you know, he's just uh, half his finger cut off. And he says, well, that just means... We're going to play shorthanded when he's on the ice. <laughs> we're there, Benny. We're going over the bar. Don't you go away now. Don't you go away. Don't go to the left. Let me get it. I'll be right back. surprise here um, she's not too shy but Don said I could introduce my mother and I'd like her for her to stand up right here Belfast too. You still own the cottage in uh, in Ireland now. Does your mom go over there or what? What's up going on with that? No, I uh, I keep that kind of to myself every once in a while. Uh, fly on over there and it's in Dunmanus Bay and Is that right, eh? Yeah, got a call to Falcone. <laughs> what did he say, Mom? I don't understand what he said. Hey, uh... <laughs> but anyhow, we, we get with a guy on your team, unbelievable, Brent Hall. He's got hands like magic, eh, Gene? I mean, he's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, Brett, Brett's the kind of guy, it's funny how he gets all those shots during a season. He always leads the league in shots. And when I got to the team, I noticed he doesn't take any low percentage shots. Everything is a good shot. He never takes shots from poor angles that he doesn't think he can score on. He's an unselfish shooter, but yet he still blows the league away with the amount of shots. Unbelievable the way he's got those hands. Eh? He and he and Bossy always impressed me. You know score you know they're going to shoot and yet as a broadcast you wonder how did they get alone yeah. how did they, they there's nobody within five feet bang and you say what's that wonder it's the movement your guy esposito started that instead of planning or staying in one spot that constant moving in the slot and eventually you're there and pow you know nobody ever gives phil credit 76 goals it's not phil did yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah all the time and his mom too just like but anyhow um, who's your favorite player of all, all time if you ask me just for the art of the game, Mr. Orr. Oh, Bob, it was, a, it was a joy to watch. Can I give him a kiss, Brendan, or what? <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite? Um, my, my favorite player growing up was Daryl Sittler because he was the captain of the Leafs. Uh, it was funny, I was at a hockey schooler on the summer, uh, with, and Wayne Gretzky was at it, and the kids said, Who's your favorite player? And I was kind of shy to say it was Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. I mean, he's uh, everybody's fav uh, favorite player now, but growing up, it was Daryl Sittler. Yeah, it was funny. We asked uh, Keenan. Mike Keenan was here, and he said Wayne Gretzky, too. Now, we've got to be quick. What do you think? Do you think fighting should be in the game? We've got to be quick here. Left in the game. I think uh, to a degree. I think if they take fighting out completely, I, I, they're going to have more problems with sticks, and little guys with visors are going to all of a sudden be much more courageous. Yeah. This, um, what do you think, Gene? I noticed how you smiled when you heard little guys with visors. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> And I think I think it has a role. And the thing that bothers me, and it was reiterated the other day, they say, why do they make fighting legal? It's not legal. It gets penalized yeah, like in every other minutes. sport. 
and sometimes you get ejected. So I, I, I think, and you know what's going to do away with the fighting more than anything else? The visors and the helmets. Sooner yeah. or later, they're going to get tired of banging their knuckles on helmets and face guards. Well, I knew I was going to ask an Irishman about fighting. I knew the answer was going to get. Way to go, Brendan. Thanks for coming.